The following show contains views and opinions that may not be suitable for all audiences. Audience discretion is advised. Welcome to the Port Parley Podcast, everybody. I am your host, Gomer the Ranting Thespian, and my co-host with me this week is Julia. Happy holidays, everyone. Yes, happy holidays. This is this is fun. right now we're recording this. We're going to release this during Hanukkah. So if you're Jewish, you're listening. Happy Hanukkah. And then after that, it's going to be Christmas, which is I think it falls like the day after Hanukkah ends this year, according to the calendar. And then the day after Christmas is going to be Kwanzaa. Uh, is it really? Yeah. At least just hitting them all this week. Yes. All of them just boom. <laughs> <laughs> oh. But uh, yeah. So this. We- uh, how, how have you been this past week? Um, pretty good. Uh, big changes in my life. I'm moving soon. Um, so that's been exciting, figuring that out. Um, and a lot of... What about, well, what about you? Well, me, I am just looking forward to Christmas Day because the four kids we have here, the foster kids we have, we have here are going to be gone. Other for the day. Actually, they're going to be going over Christmas Eve day for Christmas Day. I don't know if they're coming back Christmas night, but if they do, oh well, if they don't, hey. Get some peace and quiet for Christmas. Yes. Plus, everybody else is going out for other things. And I was invited. Don't don't, don't let anybody think I wasn't invited. I was. I said, no, I'm going to stay here. I'm going to film a review. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Because I've been needing to get back into it. I got back into it. I finally got the Royal Kill review done. And... I, I look back on it now and it's like, yeah, they're obvious. I obviously refresh and repolish myself at some point. But like I said on Despian Talk, you know, just take it, apply it to the next one. That's all I need to do. Um, and we're obviously about to see Christmas go down on GH. Have we ever had a Jewish family on the show? I don't recall any of them. You know, obviously people are varying levels of, you know, uh, religious, I think, comes up up a little less often than it does, say, on days where you look a priest who's a character, but, um, but yeah, I I think everybody pretty much celebrates Christmas, which is interesting. Even, Um, even the atheists, Luke. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, it'd be nice, it'd be nice to see a a menorah or an acknowledgement, you know, of some other holidays, um, on GH, but you know. Yeah. Uh, although I am, I am more concerned about everything else going on than, than just the holiday stuff, too, so, you know. Fair enough. Fair enough. Like, we found out what happened to Rick. We know what happened to Rick. Z- Z- Zakara has Rick. Oh. <laughs> uh, and... I, what I want to know is, I feel like Johnny maybe went to, the, like, the, the Heather Weber school of convincing people to do shit for you, because he's in prison. Like, what has he got to offer any of these people who are doing his dirty work. Yeah, uh, maybe. Maybe he's got somebody that's higher up in Pentonville that can give him the power to do whatever he wants. Or pending. Awesome. Um, but yeah, and, and he's like, yeah, Sonny, if you don't give us your territory, we're gonna kill your brother. And Sonny, even... He even admits, yeah, I, I'm not Rick's biggest fan, but you know, he's my brother and I don't want him to die by this bastard, so he's telling Sean and Duke to do it, and and, and of course, Sean and, and um, uh, um, Duke, they have the idea, well, well, I think like we're giving them what they want, or at least that's how it looked to me, you know, give them what they want, say we're giving them what they want, and in the meantime, you know, let's go and find Rick ourselves. But they don't know is that in the end, Julian, Carlos are like, uh, well, at least Julian's like, I don't know about this, man. I mean, killing Rick like this. I mean, we put him through enough. We put Molly through enough. You know? And I think they were talking about, you know, just letting Rick go anyway, regardless of what happens. And fuck Johnny. Right. Well, y- you know, it wouldn't surprise me in the least. If they did end up killing Rick, I, I mean, let me rephrase. I don't think they're going to kill Rick, uh, but I, I would believe it of of Carlos and Julian. I just think that they, you know, the show has made such a big deal about Rick 
and this whole thing, that I don't think they're just gonna let it drop like that. So I think Rick is gonna be safe. It'll be, um, be alright for a while. And especially since you got Julian and, I mean, you know, Julian and Carlos, and I think he got Carlos to agree, yeah, you know what, if this deal, even if this deal doesn't go through, we're gonna release the hell out of Rick. Oh, because, like, like I was saying, Molly has been through enough. Her, she, you know, her father was innocently put in prison, then he was supposedly killed. She doesn't know most of this. I think she knows, I think by now she knows that Rick was innocent. Correct. Uh, but she doesn't but, know that Rick's alive. Right. Well, because Alexis doesn't want to tell her, oh yeah, your dad's alive, but we lost him. Yeah. So. Yeah, because then, no. I, I just hope they, they at least give Rick a chance to see her again. Even if, even if, you know, narratively speaking, they have to kill him off right after. Give him oh, at least that gosh. one. Gosh, I give, hope not. I hope not too, but if they're going to do it, at least give him one last chance to see Molly. You know, yeah. if they're going to kill him off for real, then, you know, give him that last chance. I <laughs> That's just all I ask. Rick, Rick Hurst is, is too much of a, um, he's too good to lose. You know, he's, he's too talented for them to, you know, write him back in, only to have him disappear for months, and then have him just pop back in for a second before killing him off again. Like, no. You know, he's, he's, he's a great actor, and there's so much compelling drama you can get out of his character, him and Sonny, him and Molly, him and Liz, even, you know, him and Alexis, you know, sort of butting heads over Molly. There, there's so much there. And he's such a great actor. Uh. Besides, I I want him around for Liz after Jake gets his memories back. Because if yeah. Jake doesn't go back to Sam, I will eat my non-existent hat. <laughs> uh, speaking of which, Sam, very rightly, although she, although nobody else really realizes it yet, and she doesn't have much more proof than the whites of his eyes, that that yeah, Jake, Jason is the one that helped free Faze on and held her captive, threw her in the wall. And you know, lack of es evidence notwithstanding, I am totally Team Sam in this uh, Liz versus Sam throwdown. Um. Because even without the evidence, okay, you know, she's kind of going more on a gut feeling and that kind of turn of phrase, which, yes, Liz is right, is not solid evidence, yeah. which is, you know, why Dante didn't go arrest him yet. But, you know, Sam is not, as Liz seemed, was, like, implying, Sam is not spreading story all over town and slandering him. She warned Liz about the stranger living in her home with her kids because she would have wanted someone to do the same for her. And it's a pretty valid concern. Yeah. And for Liz to storm over there and get in her face, and, you know, they were rehashing all this history, which I get they were trying to play the highlights because it really is Jason. Um, but it just seemed all, a little unnecessary. And I think Liz is being very... Uh, I think she could be a lot more understanding, especially after what she went through with Dr. Ewan a while back, you know, this kind of mysterious guy who shows up out of nowhere and then turns out to be pretty dangerous and kidnaps her. So her sort of blind faith in Jake is a little unbelievable to me right now. Uh, I mean, you'd think, especially she's got two kids. Two kids left at this point. As well. Oh. Killed. I know, it's, it's a harsh way to say it. A yeah. harsh way to say it, I know. Way to go. But you would think, even just even even without the, the blind spot for a guy she didn't know. But she has two kids. She lost a child. You would think she would be a little bit more protective of the other ones she has. Where I'm trying to get at it. As, as harsh a statement as I started out with. <laughs> yeah, and, and even if, okay, even granting her that, there's a difference between having faith in someone, which she could have, she could do. She could still have that faith in Jake, without, like, attacking Sam for wanting to find out the truth. You know, she's acting like Sam is this, like, totally unreasonable vendetta, and Sam is just trying to find the truth, and she's investigating a suspect. If she clears him, great. Yeah. You know, but Liz, I don't know what was going through her head, or, or the writer's heads, you know, for sort of forcing this confrontation between these two women, who have come a long way. I'm not saying they're best friends or anything, but they've certainly come a long 
away from you know the, all that history they were they were pulling back up you know they each kind of forgiven each other and have this all to come to a head over this random guy that was random to them I don't know I mean I I, I got that I've also I, I obviously keep my nose to like what you know other people are saying about it whether you know whether I agree with them or not and somebody was like yeah you know they're bringing up all this history that they had put to bed so long ago it's like wow what the hell, writers? What the hell? Well, you know, I do, I do get that. Even if you forgive someone for, say, watching your kid get kidnapped or lying about your kid's paternity or whatever, you're not gonna forget about it. Yeah, that that is for sure. Yeah. I, I will grant them that, but it didn't exactly seem relevant to the current situation yeah for not forgetting that's one thing but I, I i always i guess i've always had the feeling that like if you forgive somebody then you're not going to just sit there and throw it in their face at a later time whatever, yeah anger exactly. or whatever that, that's exactly. kind of what I, what I get there but uh, i don't know maybe 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 i'm just a little more naive in that department i don't know <laughs> but it could be of, speaking of forgiving um i'm just gonna Veer the conversation slightly to uh, Ava and Sabrina. Yeah. Uh, which was very interesting this week. Um, we haven't, we've barely seen Sabrina lately, you know, since that, that little episode with Ava and the Pills. Um, so it was a really nice uh, to see, well, first of all, to see Patrick, you know, let Sabrina know what he learned about their son's death. Um, but then for Ava to sort of forgive Sabrina. And I guess she's, you know, bigger fish to fry, but it, that was, that was a really, it's really compelling touching. scene, I thought. Yeah. Kind of touching, because it's like, it's like, oh, well, no, she didn't have to, I mean, I mean, granted, I, I would find it hard to forgive somebody if I had been in Ava's position, which shows that Ava is a bigger person than me in this case, <laughs> uh, I guess, or, or who knows, she may have found it, you know, hard to do at first, and then after everything that's been happening to her, she's gotten to this point where she can. Who knows? And, uh, and I think it's really nice that Sabrina, you know, because I think when, when that was all going down, I think some people were very skeptical that Sabrina would do something like that, and they thought people, or they thought the writers, you know, were writing her very out of character and whatnot. And, and I can see that, but I also, you know, now that we've sort of come out the other side, I feel less that it was out of character and more that, you know, she had a, a bit of a breakdown um, after her son's death, which we, you know, we saw evidenced with that, um, that stuff with Felix when she was, she looked out it was her wedding day still. So I think it was sort of more of that. And I think now she's come out the other side and she's, you know, realizes, you know, what she did wrong. I don't think we're going to see like a total shift in her personality going forward. I think it's her going to be coming back from that. And, you know, I really hope now that she's lost her job at GH, that opens the door for her to take up, uh, uh Michael's job offer at the clinic. Yeah, I hope so. I th I want to say she talked to Michael at one point within the past couple of weeks. Uh, yeah, they talked a little while ago, and I think she last they talked about it, she had turned it down. But she's unemployed. She's got to pay rent somehow. She's not going to be wanting to, you know, ask Patrick for money or to let Felix pay for her for too much longer because she's got her pride. And Michael, I mean, I think maybe it's a little too soon for Michael. But, um to jump into anything, but it'd be interesting if there was, like, a sort of Sabrina, I'm not, like, advocating for yet another love triangle, but, you know, Sabrina, Michael, Michael, Rosalie, I don't know. Oh, dear. Or, or, you know what they could do? Sabrina, Rosalie. I would be so, so down for that, you have no idea. <laughs> I mean, hey, it's not like they don't have homosexual pairings on GH. I mean, yeah, hi, Brad Lucas. Yeah, have for quite a while. So, yeah, I could, I could be up for some uh, bisexual. Yeah. Sabrina, Rosalie, uh, uh oh, yeah. relationship going down. Definitely, definitely on the bisexual, cause, cause I, that's one thing I have noticed. Kind of, kind of a little off tangent a bit, but it's like there's not a lot of bisexual representation. In, in, in anything. There. Yeah. So it's like having a little bit of bisexual representation. Good thing. I would, you know, I would be down for that. And and. For that matter, it would not matter who the character is. Oh yeah, I didn't mean I'd only yeah. go for. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, I, I I understand that, but but you know, 
to just kind of put it out there a little bit more. It doesn't matter which character it is. It could be Sonny for all I care. He realizes he also <laughs> likes dudes. Who, who, who knows? I, w I would be okay with that, you know? Because, you know, bisexual, but he would also be human. And he would still have all of his other flaws. He would just also like to bang dudes. It, it would just be another aspect that's represented. I mean, you've got your gay guys. You've got you've got your straights and you got your gays. Let's have some bisexuals. Let's have, let's have like, like gender queer on there, too. <laughs> I mean, I want to see, like, more of it. It's not gates. Oh, yeah. Open them all up. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> uh, but speaking of Michael, he... he, he oh. It's like, dude, you're, gonna, like, you're like going a little... a little far here. I mean, I know... I know betrayal. Huge betrayal. And I can understand him for, you know, writing off his parents at this point. Yeah. A while back, I think I made some comment that um, I really wanted Michael to have a proper enemy because there was like this dream sequence like ages ago. I think someone, um, Sunny maybe dreamt that like Michael was tearing into him or something. And, and, and Chad Duell pulled out this like really nice attitude and he had a lot of bite. It was great. And I was like, oh, I just need one character that Michael like hates. We can finally we can get some fire in his character. And I, um, I'm regretting my words so much now because this is just <laughs> breaking my heart every scene he's in after I stopped laughing at the whole name change thing because I get that it's symbolic and whatnot but I just thought it was kind of funny especially when Scarly brought up that Jason named him but once I got past that now all all of this just hurts my soul he wouldn't even hold the baby he yeah. wouldn't hold the baby guys I'm not okay dude, it's like, dude my man I know you're still upset, you know, yeah, okay, bitching at Carly, you know, writing her off, writing Sonny off, whatever, okay, that's fine. Being mad at Morgan and Geeky because they didn't come right to you, and, and especially, you know, I, I, I can't really say I would blame one of those two over the other, you know, because my brain was first start yeah, yeah, I was, uh, my first, my brain was gonna be like, well, well, you know, I mean, more a fault because she was convinced not to, but no, she wasn't, she's not more a fault, you know, they're, they're, I, I, yeah, yeah, that's where my brain kept going, I'm trying to talk faster than my brain, uh, but, you know, but Kiki wanting to run and tell Michael, that does work to her credit in my eyes, you know, in the, in the end, she still kept it from him, and I can still understand him being upset with both of them, but kicking them out of the damn brownstone, really? You know, I, I, it was a little... You know, I could definitely see that, you know, they're, they're, I mean, they're not paying rent. Yeah. Is it a business to run? I don't know. I'm not, it's not even that so much as the be out of here by the end of the day thing that got me. You know, like, if you like, okay, you've got a week, you know, get out. But, like, no, end of the, end of the day, take your newborn baby and get out. Like, really, Michael? Wow. Like, Jesus, um, man. And then, of course, Carly offers to take them in because she's got, you know, perfectly large house and their family and of course Michael just oh he just I feel like he just tore into them every opportunity right I mean from the moment he walked into the door like oh isn't this cozy like yeah Michael it is deal with it um yeah. but he kind of had a point when you know Carly said oh I'm not with Sunny anymore um and you know she was explaining Sonny's she and Sonny have ended it but you know Michael kind of wanted to know what was it he said like why are you telling me this and she said she didn't want to like disrespect like her love for Sonny or like lie about her love for Sonny and he was like oh I thought maybe you wouldn't have wanted to lie to me again yeah and, that's what it was it's like ouch very ouch. It's like, um, <laughs> it's like, it's like, it's, I'm, a, I'm of two minds on this because on the one hand, yeah, Carly, I, I could understand her not wanting to, to, you know, dishonor her love for Sunny. I, I could understand that. But at the same time, you, she could have, she could have used better words, I think, to where, yeah. you know, but, and then, and then of course there's Michael and he was a little, Kind of a little dickish, a little bit, you know. You know, it, 
it's it just it just hurts me so much because I love Carly. Carly's one of my all time favorites. Yeah. But I think Michael had a bit of a point there. It didn't make it not hurt. I'm still, you know, my heart's still breaking. But I mean, yeah, yeah I think you know while Carly stands by her choices, which is you know admirable in its own way. Yeah. Um, you know, it's still like. I mean, it's killing Michael, and he's putting him, you know, he's hiding behind his anger, but he's so, so hurt, and I think it's sometimes hard to see that, because he's just anger, 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 and he's using that, he's lashing out at everybody, um, you know, and even when he and Rosalie were sort of, you know, he was sort of finding comfort or whatever with Rosalie, it was still a very angry kind of projection, you know, from him. Um, and I really, I kind of want to see, it's, I mean, it's got to be with someone he still cares about. So, like, you know, Rosalie or, or Monica, or maybe, you know, eventually he'll have a scene, um, you know, connecting with Jake or Jason, maybe, before, whether it's before or after he regains his memories. And I really just want him to sort of let down the walls and, like, let us see his hurt, not just his anger. That would be good. Although, well, when you're talking about, you know, like, projecting anger with when he was with Rosalie, I made me think, oh, God, that has got to be some hellacious sex. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Of course, because that's where my mind goes. <laughs> you know, I mean, you're not wrong. <laughs> no, of course I'm not. Especially in this one. That, that's that's one of the things I am proud of. It's like, usually, usually when it comes to, to like, characters and, and sex and all that, I'm usually close if not on the mark <laughs> I like to think uh, so let's see um, what other which other characters have, have we well, well well hey Morgan and Kiki and Carly they all they all went and got went to go see Dr. Clay say hey doc uh, paternity test and since well Ava was in prison Kiki was able to sign off on it because she's next of kin so uh, they they went and got the test you know got the test done and, and Silas is doing the thing and here's here's the thing though they didn't they didn't play Friday's episode in fact they didn't even put it up on Hulu. Well, like Friday was, was preempted. Yeah, it was preempted for um, a press conference or something. Yeah, the president preempted it, which of course everybody of course. was like. Rrr, 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 rrr. But I mean, you know, it'll it'll air Monday. It'll air Monday. Oh, today. Wait. Yeah. Yeah, today, the day we're recording this, it, it, in fact, it's going uh, right now. But I, pr I bring this up. Uh, somebody on Tumblr that I follow that also watches GH, um, he had found a link to a Hulu video that, that was oh, put up. No, 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 don't. I'm in denial about this. I, I am, I am, I am not going to say what it was, but I'll just say fucking spoilers, people. Right? Like, right? I saw that, too, on Tumblr, and I was like, really? Couldn't have, couldn't have marked that with a spoiler yeah. warning. Yeah, this this is why I make make an effort to not, uh, you know, unless I'm like live blogging or something. I really try not. I I, I make it a point not to go through spoilers. Uh, I, I I'm I, horrible I, attacking I, anyway. I read spoilers like on purpose often, but I tend not. I try not to post them. Yeah. Um. I only I only post about what's aired. Um. Yeah. But. Yeah, so they they didn't reveal on the show that has aired so far. Just to get back to that, they have not revealed yet the results yeah. of the test. Um, but I'm telling you right now, if it's sunny, I don't I don't care. I am going to be in complete denial, and I am going to uh, refuse to accept that <laughs> because Sunny has enough damn kids. Yeah. And I think it'd be so much more interesting to watch Morgan struggle with being a father and struggle with his relationship with Ava and um, you know I think that would be a much more compelling storyline than Morgan's a little angsty because the woman he loved had a baby with his dad like, like it just he would just angst around for a bit maybe he'd sleep with Kiki just because he's hurt and then what like no give him the kid please yeah and, and, and it would be you know, if it goes in that route, and then they end up giving it the kid anyway. Oh yeah, if it if it if the test comes back that it's Sunny's baby, 
then I really hope someone switches the tests. Yeah. Like, someone, maybe Carly or someone thought that Morgan can't handle having a kid right now, and so they switch the results so that, I don't know, Kiki or Carly or whoever will end up raising the kid, but then it'll come, the truth will come out. Yeah. And Morgan will have a baby. Which, to which, if that turns out to be the case, and, like, somebody like Carly switched it because of, of, of whatever, it's like, I, I, I'm... People who say that, that, you know, like, Morgan and Kiki are, are too young to be taking care of a kid, blah, 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 blah. It's like, where the fuck do you think all these other older characters started? <laughs> I mean, right. Carly, when she came on the show, she was, uh, you, you, you what, your early 20s, right? You know, because cause I don't think Carly was much older than you were when she first came on the show. Yeah. She definitely was younger than, what, than me right now, so. Yeah, I mean. People have kids in their 20s all the time. I mean, yeah, they're a little young, and maybe six months ago even, I would have said, Jesus Christ, please, no one can work in custody of a child. Um, <laughs> but he's come a long way, and he's grown up a lot. Yeah. And I'm not saying he's going to be a perfect dad right out the gate, but, I mean, neither is... You know, Luke still isn't always a great dad. Nicholas is kind of a shit father. I mean, yeah. you know... It, it, it's it's all it's all relative, and everybody's got to start somewhere. Yeah, I mean, hell, even you know, you brought Luke. Alan Quartermain wasn't the perfect father either, so you know, AJ wasn't. Nobody was. AJ just sucks. What? I mean, sorry. <laughs> oh no. No, okay. Oh. I'm just gonna not to rehash history, but even as recently as when, um, like this time around, I mean, when AJ came back this time, uh, you know, and there was that whole episode where, um. Brenda, like, got Michael drunk and pretended they had sex or whatever, and and this is, keep in mind, after the storyline where Michael was raped in prison. Yeah. And just to remind everyone, if you are drugged and unconscious, you cannot consent to sex. So for all Michael knew, because he didn't remember, Brenda had taken advantage of him, and AJ, his father, was just kind of cackling in delight that Sonny and Carly would be annoyed by this, instead of, like, supporting his son. Yeah. That, I'm just saying. That is, that is a little not a bad. Father, by any means. Yeah. Oh, definitely not. <laughs> um, so, oh. sorry, not, not to backtrack months and months and months, but no, it's okay. I just... Although, uh, I will say, I will say, I did like his initial reaction, because I kind of like spit takes. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, you know what? Michael got one back when AJ banked Carly. So, you know. Oh, okay. <laughs> I yeah. saved a screen cap of Michael's face when, when that happened. I have that around somewhere. There's a, I have a screen cap. Michael's face looking at AJ like, what the fuck, Dad? What the fuck? <laughs> and surprisingly, Carly didn't get pregnant. Oh, yep. <laughs> oh, but, but um, you, brought up, you brought up Luke and, yes. and eventually Nicholas. And, oh, God, Elton John is still playing. God damn it. Give it one more week, Elton John will stop playing. You know, because everybody will be used to the fact that Helena's around again. And, and of course, Spencer told Nicholas that, you know, his great-grandmother was around. And Nicholas was like, what, Leslie? No, uh, the other great-grandmother. Helena? Yeah. And, he, and he's like, you shouldn't go around her or whatever. And then, out from the secret passage. Hi, Helena. Ah, oh, shit. It was hilarious. Was she just, like dropping waiting for the perfect moment to make a grand entrance Probably. because I feel like that's exactly what she was doing oh that that that's definitely what she was doing I, I would not be surprised and of course now that Nicholas is the old surviving heir to the Cassadine Empire and, and family and all of that Helena's like yeah you better play ball or I'll make sure you lose everything which is interesting because I wonder, because they haven't, they've never really discussed it. No. I, she, I assume she's talking about nefarious means rather than illegal oh, to exactly. take away Nicholas's uh, uh, inheritance. But if Nicholas, even if she wants to take it away from Nicholas, she's still then pinning her hopes on Spencer. Yeah. So what's she gonna do? Like steal all the money and then like put it in like a trust until Spencer's of age? Like I don't know what Helena's thinking exactly. And of course, if bad things befall Nicholas, they could very well befall Spencer. Of course, then again, well, knowing Helena, hurt him. yeah, 
is at least not directly, because I'm because as soon as that came out of my mouth, I'm thinking, no, wait, she would yeah, probably yeah, yeah. take Spencer before something bad happened to Nicholas. Oh, for sure. She would, it, you know, if it came to it, she would, yeah, she'd much rather take out Nicholas, and then she could raise Spencer and shape him, you know, or attempt to. He's pretty stubborn, uh, you know, in her own idea of the ideal cast iron heir. In other words, another Stavros. Ha. Yes. God Hopefully damn. not as psychotically obsessed with women who don't have any interest in him. Although, uh, I don't know, we're already getting shades of that with him and Emma. Not to compare. Not to like, compare Spencer no. with Stavros, I'm just saying. Yeah, just, just, no, please no. Uh, but there are plenty of years to work with that, unless they sore ass the hell out of him. Which, um, I kind of hope not. Uh, you know, if if they do, I hope they do all those kids kind of together, because it's always jarring when you've got people who are supposed to be around the same age, <coughs> Morgan and Molly, and then you sore us one or, or some of them and not the rest, because then it's like, and then, I don't know, it just, it throws things off a little bit. Just a little bit. Use your sore assing wisely. That's all I can say. To future writers out there, if you must sore ass somebody, do it wisely. Just, just wait a bit there. So, uh, speaking of Cassidines, uh, yeah. sort of sort fake Cassidines. Well, fake Cassidines. <laughs> ah, yes. Because we know that Victor is not Nathan's father. Yeah, but, but nobody Nathan, else. Nathan, exactly. Nobody but Liesl. Everyone else thinks that he is. So, Nathan used that connection to appeal to Alexis, which, you know, I didn't really connect those dots, but if Nathan was Victor's son, he and Alexis are actually then first cousins. Right. <laughs> which, which is very interesting, um, that conversation then, because they haven't really, you know, interacted that much, but she was like, well, you know, why would I help Nina? And he says, do it for me, and she's like, oh yeah, because we're so close, and he pulled out the Cassidine connection, which was I don't know if I thought about, and she agreed to take on Nina's case, which I'm I'm fine with. I think it's gonna be interesting. But then Nina, oh, okay. So Nina and Franca this week. I I hate how much I like Nina and Franco oh. <laughs> because I hate Franco so much that I don't want to enjoy their scenes. You know, does that make sense? I think but so, yeah. They're they're they have the most amazing relationship. Yeah. They you know, they care about each other, they are willing to do terrible, terrible things for each other. Um but she you know, she uses or she's trying to to get Alexis to also represent Franco, which is very sweet on her part, I suppose. Um, but I really don't want Alexis to do it. Yeah. No, I want him to go to prison, and I want him to never come back. Although, at least according to the previews, I think she does. At least according to the previews that were actually on the episode. So I was like, yeah, not really much right. of a spoiler there. <laughs> uh, well, unless, unless it's just like waiting for his arraignment or something. Yeah. Or, um, I don't know. I, I hope... I don't know. Like, part of me could watch an entire spin-off of just Nina and Franco. And part of me never wants to see Franco ever again on my screen. Yeah, I mean Franco without without the uh, homicidal tendencies, he, he would be he would be fine. You know, without, without you know without the absolute over too much crazy. You know, give him just enough crazy. Make give him you know like 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 he was when he was first with Carly. You know he was you know and after the brain tumor and everything he was he was weird he was quirky and I liked it. No, see see that's what I hated. I like it better now that he's, like, willing to kill random people to protect Nina, and, you know, like, I'd rather have them embrace the, like, the criminal, you know, evilness, and then make him still seem, you know, 3D and, and interesting because of his evil, you know, relationship with Nina and have them both kind of go off and be evil together, then have this, like, fake gross thing where he's like, oh yeah, no, I've totally changed. Uh, like, that just felt, that rang so false to me. Like, I'm okay with him being on the show as long as they're, like, acknowledging that he's done terrible things and he's gonna continue to do terrible things.
terrible things. Like, he doesn't need a redemption arc to be an interesting character. True. I'd rather not have them force, like, yet another redemption arc for him. No. There's, you know, I think there's characters that just don't need it, and I think it's kind of gross to have it for certain characters, if that makes sense. Like, like yeah. just a quick example, non, non-soap example, but if anyone watches Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., right, Grant Ward should never get a redemption arc. I think I would throw up if they tried to do that with him. You know, it's that kind of thing. Like, some characters have just gone too far. They can still be really compelling characters, and you can give them great storylines, and you can even have this sort of sympathetic angle with Franco Nina, but don't try to fucking redeem him, please. I, I can I can see that. Although, although you could probably do a little bit of both, you know, Franco with this, you know, the quirky personality, the awkwardness, still have the evil side that comes out when it need, or at least when it needs to. Kind of, kind of, which actually, now that I think about it, kind of did with Carly, you know, when, when, uh, Heather tried to kill her. Yeah. He, he, he's like, he, he's like, I'm sorry, Mama, but stab him. Very, you know, and he thought Heather was gone, you know, and it's, of course not, because she's Heather fucking Weber does not die. I don't think she will die until her, her act, until, uh, what's her name, the actress who plays her dies. Robin Mateo? Is that right? Robin, Robin Mattinson, I think. Oh, Mattinson. Mattinson. I don't know where Mattinson. we... I don't know. Something but, like that. But, but I think, but, but yeah, yeah. It's gonna be one of those roles that's not gonna die until the actress dies, just like Luke. Uh, when, when Tony Geary finally passes on, he is, you know, nobody's gonna replace Luke. You know, it's interesting how, with Luke being an exception, that seems to be, well, okay, not just the ghost, I was going to say it seems to be mostly villains, but that's not right, because Lila and Edward and, you know, had that too, but it seems like it's the villains, though, typically, who just keep coming back from being dead and gone and whatever, just again and again and again, and then you've got characters like Georgie, I will never be over Georgie, um, who who died and, and never come back. Yeah. But, not, you know, I say that, and of course, you know, we got, we got Robin back, we got Jason back, so... Rick, even, sort of, although we knew he wasn't dead. Um, so I guess I can't really talk, but... Yeah. Uh, well. Although I'm finding it interesting, because I'm thinking back now, they did recast Edward once. In fact, in yeah, fact... Yeah, that was like 20 or 30 years ago. Yeah, in fact, John Ingle... Well, actually, he was recast twice. First, the first guy, I think he died and then Edward was supposedly killed off. Turns out later he was just on an island somewhere hiding out, and I think that was when, I want to say that was when he was recast with uh, John Engel, who for a while, like in the early 2000s, he was off the show for a bit and replaced with somebody else, Gesundheit. Thank you. And then after that guy was done, John Engel came back until John Engel died, and that's when they decided, okay, Edward's going to be killed off for real. So... So it's, 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 yeah, like three different guys played Edward. And, you know, they could do something more with, like, oh, Mikos. You know, I mean, I know John Calicos died a while ago, but you could recast him. Stefan, bring back Stefan. Bring him back, too. I mean, even if you have to recast him. No, 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 no. no don't recast him. Don't recast him. Yeah. Well, okay, good I point. Love, yeah. um... <laughs> oh, God, what's his name? Uh, I'm S- Stephen Nichols. Steven oh Nichols, yeah, of course, Stephen Nichols. Yeah. It's a delight, a delight. Yeah. And bonus points if they also bring back Catherine Bell. Although I'm pretty sure there's no coming back from Helena shutting you off. Of. Wasn't it Helena shut her off the wall? I think the second time, yeah. This is the second time Catherine fell off the parapet, it took. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, because like the first and, time was an accident. The second time, Helena's like, Helena's like, you going over? Woo! Stephen Nichols and Mary Beth Evans back on my screen that would, would be, be cool. a delight. Yeah. Um, I think they're still both, or or at least Mary Beth Evans is still on is still on days. Um, Stephen Nichols is kind of an on and off days, um, but we should steal them back to GH. Yes, they're fantastic. Ah uh, yes, those days. I I I, I feel like I, I should find some episodes from those days and just watch them again. You know, just just to see them all through. Like like I said, the the big plotline where uh, Stavros came back initially, you know, rose out of the cryogenic chamber like some sort of Russian Greco Frankenstein or something. 
you know, that was fun. And I wish that 9-11 hadn't happened because it was about that time they were actually going to try another world domination plot. Some kind of nerve gas or whatever. Or, or uh, I think it was a toxin, I think is what Helena had called it. And then 9-11 happened and the writers are like, oh shit, we better not. Wow. Yeah, I know that it's not surprised me. Yeah. I mean, that the writers would, would adjust. Yeah. Um, and I wasn't watching then, obviously, but yeah, that doesn't surprise me at all. Yeah, I didn't even I had actually forgotten about the toxin plot until much later, because the big things I took away from it was, okay, Stavros came back, uh, they were going to try and take over the world, they, you know, they hypnotized Lucky, uh, oh. he socked the hell out of everybody, including Stefan, Laura, Nicholas, etc, etc, etc. He killed Chloe when Chloe found out who she is, who he is, rather, and got Stefan framed, and then big confrontation under General Hospital, and once, you know, once plans were foiled, there was like a countdown timer. It wasn't exploding, but it was going to trap everybody in there with no way out and, of course, make them starve to death. And everybody got out. Stavros fell down a bottomless pit and Scott, sa and Scott saved Luke's life from that same goddamn pit. And Scott's like, yeah, you know what? If I, I think Scott's uh, uh, thing about it was like, yeah, if I, if I let you die, Laura would never forgive me type thing. I think is what it was. I, I think been a while since I've watched that scene, but I thought that was memorable. It's like, it's, you know, Luke and Scott have been rivals for years. Oh, the yeah. one rescuing the life of another, I thought that was awesome. Like, fuck yeah! <laughs> uh, and, uh, well, we brought up Alexis, who who is not only going to be representing Nina in court, but she's also taken over for representing Maxie, despite the fact that she originally was uh, representing and the judge even called her out on it, and she says, you know what, I'm just going to do the best of my ability. That's what I did there, that's what I'm going to do here. And she did her homework, and even the judge, the judge, okay, is, is it at all legal? Well, okay, wait a minute, I was about to ask you if it's legal for any member of the government to be spying on private citizens for whatever reason, but then I remembered, hello, NSA. Yeah, so. It's, I think, a little bit, I mean... A lot ridiculous, but it's ridiculous that um he didn't even give them a chance to explain because two of the three encounters were accidental. It's the teeniest fucking town in the world, and everyone knows everyone else, and you, like it's like no one even knows anyone who's not related to them practically. Yeah. So <laughs> it is virtually impossible not turn into someone in Port Charles, and especially if you're not supposed to see them you're definitely going to run into them, right? So, you know, he didn't even give them a chance to explain that. And while obviously the third encounter was deliberate, they could have, you know, there was sort of a fake, bit of a fake explanation that is totally plausible that she, you know, was voluntary at the hospital, blah, 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 but he wouldn't even hear it. So, I don't know. I really, while I would hope that... Alexis's appeal would go through and he would get, I don't know, like disbarred or reprimanded or something. I get the feeling maybe Nathan's phone call is to a mysterious someone is what's going to do the trick instead of legal means. But I. Mm, yeah, I'm willing to bet. I'm willing to bet that phone call was to Wutar. You know, that's kind of what I was thinking, but what. What could Liesel do? I feel like that's a stupid question because Liesel is pretty creative and uh, has definitely got some connections. Um, but I can't exactly picture Nathan um, well, doing could, something nefarious. It, really. could, it could be Obrecht or it could be uh, Monica. Because he is dating Monica. Oh. But does Nathan know her well enough to like call Monica up like that? He may not know her, but he might. She might know Maxie, know the situation a little bit better. Who knows? It's possible. We, we we shall find out. But as even even with the possibility of him calling Monica on this one, I'm I'm. It's pretty. I'm pretty sure he called Liesel on that one. He probably didn't call Anna, who is busy, you know, getting Jordan back in the thing. And Jordan's around. Uh, like okay, uh, I, I'm, I'm like. I, like, I need out, I need to tell TJ everything that's been going on. Yeah, I need Jordan to get out because I am so done 
with Anna and Jordan's super obvious constant meeting in, in public, despite Jordan's status as an undercover agent, which, okay, and let me also point out, this has bugged me for a while now, Jordan is undercover, right? Okay? But she uses her real name, and everyone knows about her family, so, like, usually undercover, you go off and you vanish and you use another name, and you don't want your family to be in danger. Yeah. But she's using her real name, right? So when she eventually does come clean, all of the people that she screwed over know exactly who she is, know where she lives, and could target her son, who everyone knows who he is. Yeah, that that would be pretty, like, that's pretty bad. What part of this is undercover, Jordan? Yeah, according, undercover according to the Jerome. Yeah, it's terrible. Paras to, to organize crime, which we already know they've, I mean, hell, Helene, well, okay, it would be bad to say, well, even Helena Castanet, because she's had that for years. Uh, but, you know, all these criminal organizations, the mobs, the, the, the imperialistic type people, which I put Helena under the imperialistic type because I'm willing to bet the end goal is for her and, well, well maybe not even just her family, but her to gain control of the entire fucking world. I'm willing to bet that has been the big Cassidyne MO since the 80s, you know, at least among the evil ones. So, you know, I really yeah. want like I really want a week of like mirror verse episodes where Helena is like the sweetest great grandmother in the world and Nicholas and Alexis and Sam are like bent in world domination. Oh god, that would be hilarious. Right? <laughs> it would be it would be so weird to see uh, Constance Towers actually reversing her role. It would be I've been so used to her as Helena. It, you know, as it is now is just holy shit. Like, there's actually a clip of uh, Constance Towers on YouTube, like, I think back in the 70s she was doing a, 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 a performance of some Christmas song, I forget the name of it, right off the top of my head, but, you know, it was, it's up there, you can find it, you can listen to it, and she sounds great. It's like, holy shit, the woman's got some pipes on her. I wonder how they hold up now, because, you know, obviously it's been a few years, and, and you never know, vo vocal... You know, your voice can change between now and then, your, your vocal stamina, etc. So, it, it's a lot of curiosity on my part there. Oh, lordy. But, uh, okay, so... So, so we got the imperialistic ones, that, 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 and then you got this, just your low-rate mobsters, as I think Helena called, referred to Sonny as one point. <laughs> you know, that, but... So the point of all that is, they have their whole information networks, which is how they can still keep working from prison somehow. Johnny. Uh, I still think that somebody, somebody has got somebody up in the higher ups in Pittonville and is allowing Johnny to do pull all this bullshit. Well, um, however it's going down, he's definitely got Duke and Sean's attention. Yes. Um, uh, through Sonny. And Jordan's, you know, back in the game, at least temporarily, hoping to finish this out so she can get back to TJ. And Carlos and Julian are running around trying to deal with it all. And I just, I'm, I'm wondering how loyal Carlos is to whom. Yeah. Because I don't trust, I mean, I, I like Carlos, I don't mean I don't trust him, I just mean in terms of, in relation to Julian and Ava, I don't know if I trust Carlos, because they kind of bailed on him, and, and not, I mean, not just bailed on him, they, they put him deliberately, or at least Ava did, in a very tough spot. Well, see, there was, this, oh, wait, wait, there's the bus, oh, there's Carlos hanging off the bottom of that bus there. Yeah. <laughs> so, with him now, back again, quote, working for Julian, I don't know if I trust him. I wonder if maybe he's, like, gonna report to Johnny if Julian doesn't, like, acquiesce, and they're gonna, you know, send someone to deal with Julian, or if he's gonna stab him in the back at an opportune moment, you know? Which I think would kind of be totally valid. Yeah. I mean, um, especially, especially when it comes to Ava. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just, oh, 
this. This, this, this is going to be good. We're going to need popcorn and chopsticks and everything else. Oh, this is going to be great. <laughs> Side note, speaking of Ava and, and consequences, I'm really nervous too because we've got all these men folk in jail now, right? So we've got Sonny and Johnny and possibly Franco. Um, I'm nervous that they, there wouldn't be anyone for Ava to play off of in jail, so we're just not going to see Ava for a while. Yeah. And Maura West is such a treasure. Um, she's, I think, one of my my favorite new thing on GH. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, Michelle Stafford is great, but I'm just in love with Maura West. She's phenomenal. And I am so afraid that we're, we're not going to see her if Ava really does go to jail. Because there there would be no storyline for her there. Because, you know, like, the other sort of criminal... Helene is never going to get in, put in jail. No, right? never. And Heather and Nina, you know, if if they don't get out of whatever jams they're in, you know, they'll be in, like, uh, miscavige or something, right? Because they need psychological help. Um, Although, wait, this... didn't they didn't they put Heather in, in uh, Pentonville this last time? Oh, did they? I think so. I lose track. That's possible. Okay, so maybe, maybe we'll see Ava and Heather. Maybe. Getting into something. I don't know. That'd that might be, nice. be interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah. Uh, so, so that, that would be a thing. Although I did, I think it was, yeah, it was this week they had scenes between uh, Ava and Nina. That would... Yes. <laughs> yes. You named my baby? Well, you didn't do it. You kidnapped her as soon as she was born. I didn't have time. Yeah. And the guard just did not have any time for playing Dr. Phil. <laughs> or or, or I think he wasn't. I think he was He also wasn't paid enough, too. So, it's so like, I, I, yeah. I wonder who is going to name the baby. Because the Ava's a little otherwise occupied. Um, Sonny's in jail. And I don't know if Morgan. If Morgan doesn't turn out to be the father, like, what is Kiki going to name the baby? Maybe. Okay, this is my dream. Morgan turns out to be the father. Morgan goes to visit Ava to, to so she can see the baby, and they name her together. Yeah. That's my that's my dream. That would, Stick to it. That would be awesome. That would be. Oh, let's see. Is there, is there anything else that we have not covered as far as we know? Um, <laughs> well, uh, Nathan and Maxie, I mean, there's not, I, don't, I don't have much to say about it, but Nathan and Maxie had a very, very heartbreaking and sweet moment when he asked how he could help, and she said, just hold me. Yeah, it's like, oh. Yeah, he he's the perfect man. Um, I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh. So that was really sweet. Um, I'm I'm glad that Jordan is fighting to get back to TJ because I I'm forever pissed at how uh, hypocritical Sean acts about the whole thing and how TJ somehow seems to be more willing to forgive. Well, at least maybe until this latest thing about his dad but was so willing to overlook Sean's nefarious activities, but not Jordan's. So I'm just living for the day when Jordan can tell TJ, oh, I'm a DEA agent. I'm not a drug dealer. Please love me. Yeah, and then, oh, God, that another thing that we're going to need popcorn for. <laughs> oh, yeah. All Especially if TJ's dad does come back, which my money's on. That's going to happen. Yeah, it's, that's... maybe not until the new year because there's I'm sure there's a lot going on with the you know the Christmas stuff, um, you know the holidays. There's always a lot of you know sweet emotional you know sort of side scenes and then of course drama, drama as always. But I think they might wait till the new year to reintroduce that. But it's gonna happen. I bet anything. Yeah. Oh, so so that I think I think that about covers the like the week basically. <laughs> um. Oh, oh wait, really quick, what? did we talk about how Jake is starting to have flashes? Oh, but, that's right. But he is rationalizing in a way, thinking that Sam just put the idea in his head. Yes, that's well, right. Well, though. Even went, even went to go see Patrick. Yeah. And and Patrick is like, oh, I don't know how I can help you, but, you know, hey, here, card, Doc Collins. And Jake's like, no. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, can't, I can't decide how I want this to go down. Obviously, I want him to remember he's Jason. Yeah. But I wonder if he's gonna break through the the brainwashing first, or if he's gonna remember that he's Jason and like use that, like the strength that he gets from 
you know, his memories and Sam and their love to, like, break through the brainwashing. Breaking the brainwashing with the power of love. <laughs> yeah, come on, isn't that how Lucky did it back in the day or something? I think so. You know, and if this was on Doctor Who, Diamond Hagen would be pissed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and speaking of Patrick, Sam is going to try to work past uh, his betrayal. Yay! Try to be friends. That was a pretty, another pretty heartfelt, emotional scene. Yes. Oh, Lordy. So, um, so yeah, with that, with that bit, there is all of that. Um, la, 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 la. Ah, there's like, Suppose they they they're talking about like a new character coming, and I have seen like the like the uh, site that I use for my cheat sheet, SoapCentral.com. They talk about this one character, and like, oh, what's she gonna be like? Who is she? What is she going to is there, do? What is she... Do you mean like a casting call? Not a casting call, but like a new character. Uh huh. But any I, any details? Uh, none that I can remember. I can't even find the link for oh. it. <laughs> um, okay. But well, never mind. No spoilers. Yeah. The, Just... There's no real spoilers to have anyway. There's just, it's basically speculation. Like, what is she going to bring? Well, I, I would just hope for some, and I think this is maybe like a, a little unusual because I feel like normally it's like oh all the young people, and then there's like not interesting storylines for like older characters like on a lot of shows. But um, I feel like. Cheech has a ton of awesome storylines going with a lot of their older actors, and the kids are kind of getting not a lot of screen time. Like, we barely see Molly and TJ lately. I would really like, say, Serena and Christina Baldwin to make appearances, which has been rumored for a long time, but we've seen the high nor high, not high nor hair of them. Especially Serena. I mean, they don't even have to, they don't even have to recast the part, because the girl who played her originally she should be old enough to be able to come back on her own. I think, uh, let's see, poor Charles was on 97, 98, 99, so she was about 7 or 8, so that'd be 18. Yeah, she would be right in the same age yeah. range as, like, Kiki and Morgan. And, and it's like, I know, you know, it, it obviously in soaps you've got, like, your family members and the people you sleep with and, like, your enemies, but it's like, no one has any friends, right? Kiki... Yeah. Kiki has no friends. Morgan has no friends. Michael, I guess, kind of has Rosalie now. Um, Molly doesn't have any friends. TJ doesn't have any friends. You know, yeah. it'd be nice to bring in a few more characters in that sort of general age range, and we can get some, like, you know, classic Liz Lucky, Nicholas Emily kind of stuff from back in the day. Oh, yeah. Well, um, especially because, you know, when they did have, like, Taylor on, right? You know, Molly, she and Molly weren't friends. They just keep pitting, you know, women against each other, usually over a guy. You know, like Rosalie and Kiki. You know, pit against each other over Michael and or Morgan. And I just, I would like to get some more friendships going with the girls. Yeah, I mean, cat fights can be fun sometimes, but not all the time. No. And, and, and it's just, uh, you know, they they should be saved for very special occasions. Yeah, so I'm hoping, I'm not sure exactly what their ages are supposed to be, but, you know, so are asking, so it doesn't matter. But I really would like Serena to come on and maybe be a friend for Kiki or, and or Rosalie and or Sabrina, maybe. And um, and maybe Christina could come in and be, like, a friend for Molly. There you go. Uh, that, that would be nice. Hopefully the writers will listen to this and maybe take our yes, suggestions. Yes, please. I hope. <laughs> I'll wait. It's I know best. Yes. Huh. There you go. But, uh, but yeah. So with that, that is going to be it for this week. Thank you guys for listening. If we wanted to find Julia on the social media networks and all of that, where could we find her? That would be gh-musings.tumblr.com. Sweet! And if you wanted to find me on the social medias, you can find me on Twitter and Tumblr at gomer 21 X. You can find all my other stuff, reviews, other podcasts, etc. on rtgomer.com and nerdvice.com. And uh, if you guys like the new look, because if you're watching this on YouTube, you see the little running ticker at the bottom there with all the patrons and everything. If you like the new look there, if you think this works better than the old one, then uh, just let me know. Um, I might I might keep this unless everybody else is like, no, don't do that. We like the old one better. Then, you know, odds are this might stick around <laughs> unless there's a lot of negative um, feedback for it. But at any rate, uh, again, thank you guys for watching. Uh, we're not going to have a show 
next week because it's just right after the tail end of Christmas and everybody's probably still going to be just recovering from that and you're probably still you're probably you said you're going to be gearing up for a move soon uh it, well, in January in January okay but but even still you know uh, just after the right after Christmas and Kwanzaa and everything people probably going to be just you know trying to recharge from that so it's not going to be one next week uh, so this is our last show of 2014 yes it is um happy new year yes happy new year when, when you guys if you guys listen to this within the, within like a week or two <laughs> uh, but uh, so yeah we will see you guys in the new year and until then this is Gomer the Ranting Thespian with Julia Signing off. The Port Charlie Podcast is an RT Gomer Productions presentation. Our show's theme is The Complex by Kevin McLeod. Find out more at Incompetech.com. If you like this show and want to help support future episodes, head over to Patreon.com slash Gomer21XX. For a contribution as little as a dollar per production, you can get early access to all future productions, as well as monthly patron-only vlogs and announcements. Our show's artwork was produced by the talented Becky Hopkins, who can be commissioned by going to patreon.com slash Check us out on iTunes or visit rtgomer.com for more great shows.